lads, lasses, and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC, and this is a deep dive into Maurizio Pochettino's 4-2-3-1 at Chelsea Football Club. With all our signings confirmed or soon to be confirmed now, we can finally accurately predict our starting 11 for the upcoming season, so I wanted to take an in-depth look at Poch's famous 4-2-3-1 formation and see how Chelsea would likely set up under this system. Before we go through tactics, let's put in the players who will most likely start in each position. Starting in goal, and this pains me to say a little, is Kepa Arisa Balaga. Even though we are still looking at goalkeeping targets, reports have suggested that Maurizio Pochettino is perfectly willing to keep using Kepa as the number one. I will say that if we do go on to buy a new goalkeeper, they will likely take this place, but as of right now, Kepa is the man between the sticks. Moving on to the back four, and this is one of the less confirmed parts of the team, the one constant will be Reese James in the right back spot. On his day, Reese is the best right back in the league, no questions about it, and though we have the impressive Malagusto on the books too, there's no displacing Reese from this team, especially with rumours of him gaining the captaincy if and when Cesar Azpilicueta leaves. The two centre-backs are slightly tricky to pick because we have so much talent here, but I think it's a safe bet to say that Wesley Fofana will be the most likely to play on the right-hand side, alongside one of either Benoit Badiashiel or Levi Colwell. Now I know everyone wants to see Levi in the left-hand role as soon as possible, and I know that Poch reportedly admires the player, but I'm going to put Badiashiel in this role simply because he has more experience here and has more familiarity with Wes on the right. These two are so evenly matched in terms of skill, and in that case I believe Poch will opt for the more senior player, at least for the start of the season. On the left hand side I'm going to put in Ben Chilwell. I'm really not sure why people have seemingly turned on Chilwell, he's an excellent left back and the best at the club when he's fully fit. That being said, there is an argument for Kukurea to play here instead, as they are pretty interchangeable at this current time, and there's also the chance of Ian Matson holding down this role if he stays here for the pre-season. Now the elephant in the room, and the question I know a lot of you will be asking, will be what about Lewis Hall? I've mentioned this in the past, but resigning a talent such as Hall to the left back spot is just silly to me. He's a left sided midfielder, and he's best utilised there. In fact, he's our only left footed centre mid in our team, and because of that, I think he's more likely to be used as an impact sub in midfield, either to add more creativity, or add some fresh legs to the team. Let's move on to that midfield because this is incredibly easy to choose. In the pivot we have the always impressive Enzo Fernandez, next to his new fellow South American partner Moise Caicedo. Though he hasn't signed the papers yet, Caicedo is reported as being pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point, with a Brighton midfielder only wanting Chelsea as his next destination. The young Ecuadorian is a massive fan of the soon to be departing N'Golo Conte and will likely take the number 7 shirt once he arrives. We are expected to wait until we have sorted out our outgoings, such as the multitude of players leaving for Saudi Arabia, before we launch a formal bid, which is looking to be around the 75 to 80 million pound mark, plus add-ons. These two will be starting almost every week, and though Caicedo isn't the sitting DM that we were expecting slash wanting, he'll still do an excellent job as a ball winner and bring some much needed energy to our defensive midfield. Moving on to the attacking three, and once again this picks itself. Noni Madueke is a guarantee to start on the right hand side, with the young Englishman continuing his great form from the tail end of last season into the under 21 England side. On the right is going to be Mikhailo Mudrik, who has also impressed in his international duties, with the Ukrainian likely being Poch's Chelsea's answer to Hyungman Son. Mudrik is still quite raw and will need some refining, but I feel as if Pochettino will admire his constant hard working attitude and will prefer him over Sterling or Pulisic in this left sided role. And lastly, in the middle, is the finally confirmed Frenchman, Christopher Nkunku. It's always been known that as soon as Nkunku arrived, he was going straight into the starting 11, and this cam slash centre forward position under Poch is almost tailor made for him, considering how Poch utilised Deli Alley when he was at Tottenham. I will get into this role more in the next section, but just know that Christo is here to be a mainstay of this Chelsea team for years to come. Finally, the last player to include is who I believe will be our starting striker next season, Nicholas Jackson. It's been confirmed that his signing will go ahead, it's just a matter of time before he puts pen to paper. I've mentioned this in the past but I've been watching him very closely since we were linked with him, and in all honesty he looks like the total package. I've already done a piece on him in this video, so if you'd like to watch that there'll be a link to that video in the top right of your screen now. I do believe he is ready to take the striker role as his own, with our only strikers being Brozier, who is coming back from an injury, 
David Datra Fofana, who is looking likely to exit on a loan deal, and Romelu Lukaku, who should be exiled from this team as swiftly as possible. Let's hope he can synergize well with his new teammates quickly and start bagging goals in the next season. Alright, so that's who we'll play, but let's look at how we will play. But before we do, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to the channel. Still around 94% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. I'll be mostly comparing us to the way that the 2016-17 Tottenham Hotspur squad played, as this is the team that brought Maurizio Pochettino the most success he had in the Premier League. Though the teams are quite different and the personnel aren't exactly the same profiles, I do still believe Poch will try and establish this style, and if done correctly, I believe it could bring us a lot of success. So how does this team set up? Firstly, it's worth mentioning that this team had a large focus on the fullbacks and getting them high up the pitch. In the attacking phase, the team would switch to playing a 3-4-2-1, with Danny Rose and Kyle Walker almost playing as wingbacks at times. As our two best fullbacks, James and Chilwell, are by far at their best when playing as wingbacks, this would suit us perfectly and help bring out their incredible attacking capabilities. This highly offensive tactic would mean that one of the two in a midfield pivot would have to drop deep to supplement the defence when needed. For the most part, this was done by either Eric Dyer or Victor Wanyama, and though we don't have that exact profile of player, which is why I really want to do Garte as he suits this role more, I think that Caicedo would be more than comfortable doing this job if it was required. If I'm being honest, Ethan Ampadu would have been great for this position, as he is a mixture of a centre-back and a DM, but unfortunately he seems to be on his way out permanently to the Italian First Division. With this reshuffle in the midfield, one of the attacking trio behind the main striker would drop deep to pick up the ball and play through balls up to the remaining three players, and in the Tottenham team this was the ever-impressive Christian Eriksen, who would start out wide and then drift centrally to collect the ball. With this, the central cam would run forward playing as a second striker. This was of course the task of Deli Alley before his legs turned into cottage cheese and he forgot how to play football. So who would do these roles for Chelsea? Well, it's a bit of a strange one. In terms of profiles, Nkunku would seem like the closest to Ericsson, but in all honesty he is way more suited to play as the second striker. He loves getting forward and combining with the main striker, and for the most part at RB Leipzig has played as a second striker rather than a strictly central cam. That's all well and good, but then who would play in the Ericsson role? Well, this might sound a bit odd, but I believe it will be whoever is playing on the left hand side for us, and in this current team that's Mudrik. You might be thinking to yourself, but Mono, Mudrik and Eriksen are nothing alike, why would he play here? Let me explain. One of the two wingers would have to push on and run in behind, and I believe that is more suited to Noni Madueke. Noni is great at taking on players, and despite him being left footed, he usually takes the ball to the byline rather than playing inside, and though he's great at that, he lacks the end product slash passing at this current time. Mudrik, on the other hand, loves coming onto his right foot centrally, rather than going around to the outside, and we've seen that he has a great eye for a through pass too. Not only this, but Sterling, who will also play on that left-hand side, is also much suited to cutting inside, especially now since his pace is less than it used to be. So I believe those two would operate that way, interchanging with Nkunku as that cam. In the place of Harry Kane would be Nico Jackson, and though the two are hardly comparable, I do believe that Jackson has similar attributes to Kane in some regards. Jackson is great at holding the ball up, and great with the ball at his feet, whether that be trying to run past players or providing for his teammates. He's able to finish well, and he's improving in the air too. He's able to play as a target man, but also as a mobile striker, similarly to how Kane would operate in the Spurs team, almost like a mixture of a 10 and a 9. And though Kane is levels above Jackson at this current moment, there's no denying that. I have high hopes for this Senegalese youngster, and I believe he'll make a real difference when it comes to our attacking play. Let's touch on the defensive phase, and then I'll give what I believe the overall playing style will be for this team, and where the goals would come from. In the defensive phase, I think that we'd fall back into a 4-4-1-1 or 4-5-1 formation, with both midfielders and wingers dropping into the second of the two banks of four. Nkunku could also drop deep if he was needed to make this a bank of five. The one player who would be left up top would be Nico Jackson, as he is very good on the transition and would be able to progress the team up the pitch after a spell of pressure. We saw that he did this very well playing for Senegal in the AFCON qualifiers against Benin, and would be able to hold the ball until reinforcements arrived. 
This system would make us incredibly difficult to break down centrally, as the midfield would be extremely compact with little to no space for central players to receive passes or dribble. And with a player who is excellent at ball winning like Caicedo in the midfield, I think a lot of teams would fail to combat this and leave themselves open on the counter attack. This setup would make us slightly vulnerable to early balls into the box from wide areas however, but with the extremely aerially potent centre backs we have, I think we'd be able to deal with that issue quite well as well. Finally, let's look at how the team would actually operate in game. In my opinion, almost every attack of ours will start with Enzo Fernandez. Against high pressure teams, I believe we will play short from the back, trying to beat the press until the opportunity for Enzo to progress the ball up to the central striker or either winger arises. On the flip side, against teams that don't press, I think the focus will be more on long diagonal balls from Enzo to either fullback, opening up spaces for the attacking four to run into. I theorise that the majority of our goals will be set up from these long lofted passes, with the fullbacks then able to target Jackson or Nkunku in the box with early crosses, or play it short to more centrally for the attacking midfield three. A lot of our attacking play will likely be off the back of Caicedo winning the ball high too, with a lot of counter-attacking play being a particularly potent weapon for the Blues. I believe this system is incredibly balanced, and will bring us great success in the future with this incredibly promising set of young players, and a coach who managed to deadlift a relatively average Spurs team to a top 2 finish in the league that season. But that was just my first deep dive into Mauricio Pochettino's 4-2-3-1 tactics for next season, thanks ever so much for watching. Let me know how you think we will play under Pochettino in the comment section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on the screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues.